Welcome to this video in which we do an example of mesh analysis and this example includes independent current sources. Now in the introduction to mesh, I keep saying mesh analysis which it isn't, well sometimes it looks like it. In the introduction to mesh analysis video uh, we indicated that, or we did a circuit that home, had only independent voltage sources and that's easy. However, when we have independent current sources, things become a little more complicated, as we'll see as we go through this example. So, let's begin this example. If you remember from the uh, introductory video, the steps in mesh analysis are first to identify the meshes. And again, meshes are the holes in the circuit. They're the areas that are surrounded by components. So if I look at this circuit, I have a mesh here. I have a second mesh here. And a third mesh here. And uh, let's see, we'll call this one, two, and three. So uh, we've got our meshes identified and labeled. So that was easy. Let's go to step two. Step two is to draw in our mesh currents. So let's see, we'll draw mesh current I1 like this. Okay, so I1 is the current that flows around mesh 1. We'll draw mesh current I2 like this, and I'm drawing them all clockwise. Again, if you want to be contrarian, draw them all counterclockwise, it will still work. But don't mix clockwise and counterclockwise. You can do it if you're good, but uh, you probably don't want to put yourself through that pain. And finally, we'll draw I3. Okay, so um, how do we go about solving uh, or, or working this problem? In the last uh, example, or in the introductory example, we just applied Kirchhoff's voltage law around each loop and it turned out to work beautifully. However, if I try to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around loop one, I can figure out what the voltage across um, this two ohm resistor is. I can figure out the voltage across this one ohm resistor, but I have nothing that tells me what the voltage across this current supply is going to be. And that's why having a current supply in a uh, mesh analysis complicates things. It makes it uh, a little messy. Similarly, if I look at mesh 2, I can figure out what the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor is. I know the voltage across the 6 volt source, but I don't know the voltage across the current source again, the 5 amp current source. So that actually complicates things quite a bit. But it turns out we can use the current source to get two equations. Well, actually, we'll use the current source itself to get one equation um, that relates I1 and I2. And then we'll take KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, around a somewhat different path, which we call a super mesh. And that will give us another equation that relates I2, I1, and I3. Then we'll get a third equation around loop 3, or mesh 3. Um, and then we'll plug them into our equation solver and we'll be done. So let's look at this current source. Um, I have going through the current source this direction, I1. I have going through the current source this direction, I2. And so what this tells me then is I2 minus I1 has to be equal to 5 amps. Okay, again, this current source is placing a constraint on the relationship between I1 and I2. So that's one equation. The next equation I'm going to get by looking at a path for KVL, which again I call my super mesh, 
since it's super, it's going to be in hot pink, that goes around mesh 1 until we get to the current source. Then we go down around mesh 2 until we come back to the current source, and then we jump back to mesh 1. Okay, so this guy here is my super mesh. And you'll notice that what I've done is applied KVL to the two meshes that um, are involved in the current source. Um, and an another way of thinking about it is I've uh, gone around the current source. Uh, I've basically created a mesh that goes around the current source. So with the super mesh in place, I can now um, go ahead and apply KVL around the super mesh and get an equation that will relate I1, I2, and I3. So if we do this, um, let's start with the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor. The voltage across that 2 ohm resistor is I1 times 2 ohms. Actually here, let's put this down at the bottom because we're going to need lots of space for this guy. It's going to be big. I1 times 2 ohms. Okay, now I go across the 1 ohm resistor, and you can see at the 1 ohm resistor, I'll have 1 ohm times I1, that's the current going this way through the resistor, minus I3, that's the current going this way through the resistor. Okay, and then I'll get down here to the 3 ohm resistor, and going down through the 3 ohm resistor, I have I2. So I'll have plus 2 ohms, I2. And going up through the 3 ohm resistor, I have I3. So again, I have minus I3. Okay. So I keep cruising around my super mesh. I get to the 6 volt um, voltage source. And so the next thing I need to do then, I'm going from negative to positive, so this will be minus 6 volts. And then I keep cruising around my super mesh, and I'm back where I started. So this is all equal to 0. Okay, so I can simplify this a little bit, and I can say then that, um, let's see, I can factor out an I1 and get 2 ohms plus 1 ohms. And then I can say plus 2 ohms times I2. Now factor out I3, so I get I th minus I3, 1 ohm, plus 2 ohms. And this is all equal to 6 volts. Okay, pretty good so far, hopefully. Now, um, our super mesh is taking care of meshes 1 and 2. We've got two equations, this guy here and this guy here, in two unknowns. So uh, that's pretty much everything we can get from one super mesh. The last thing to do is look at mesh 3. Now you'll notice with mesh 3, I've defined my mesh current I3 like this. And you'll notice that this 4 amp current source only has one mesh current going through it. So what this tells me directly is that I3 is negative 4 amps, okay? Because I3 is the only virtual current, mesh current, going through the 4 amp source, and uh, they're going in opposite directions, so I know that I3 has to be negative 4 amps. So that then completes step 2. So the next thing I need to do is apply my uh, equation solver to solve for this. And uh, I'm actually writing this down so that I don't have to flip back and forth and make everybody crazy. I don't know, you might find the flipping back and forth enjoyable. Okay, so I've got my three equations. I go to my 
equation solver, which again today is Wolfram Alpha. And again, rather than um, uh, calling it I1 and I2, because uh, I'm not quite sure how Alpha handles I, it tends to think of it as the imaginary uh, part of imaginary numbers. I will call uh, I1 and I2 and I3, A1, A2, and A3. So we have our first equation, A2 minus A1 is equal to 5 amps, or 5. And you'll notice I'm not putting in units. I started to put in a unit there. That's bad because alpha will interpret that as a variable. It won't interpret that as the unit you want it to, so you just don't put units in. Okay, so this was the first equation I got from the super node. The second equation is A1 times 2 ohms plus 1 ohm plus A2 times 2 ohms minus whoops, A3 1 ohm plus 2 ohms. And that's equal to 6 volts. And finally, we have A3 is equal to minus 4. So we hit return. And through the magic of the internet, uh, we get basically that uh, A1 is minus uh, 16 fifths, which in a decimal form is 3.2. A2 is 9 fifths, which is 1.8. And A3, surprisingly enough, is minus 4. Actually, I hope you weren't surprised at that. Okay, so what this tells us then is um, I1 has a value of minus 3.2 amps. Okay, so what that really means is that this virtual current I1 is flowing opposite to the direction that we've shown it. I2 this guy here is 1.8 amps and I3 is negative uh, 4 amps. We already knew that. Okay, so depending on what you want to know, you're either done or you're not. So for example, if you wanted to know the current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor, so suppose I'm interested in finding this current, we'll call it I. Well, we have I would be I2 minus I3, which in this case would be um, 1.8 amps minus negative 4 amps, which would be 5.8 amps. If I then wanted to find the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor, it would be this current times 3. So uh, the voltage, if we called this V, we can have V is 3 ohms times 5.8 amps, which will be 17.4 volts, if I've got that right. So. I can find similarly other voltages and currents as necessary through the circuit. So hopefully this has been useful. Um, again, the primary idea here, the thing that makes this more complex than the simple example we use to introduce mesh analysis is the fact that we have independent current sources. And the independent current sources can do one of two things. If you're lucky, it'll be like this. It'll be on a part of the mesh where only the mesh current flows, and in that case, it tells us exactly what the mesh current is. If you're not lucky, it will sit between two meshes, and if it sits between two meshes, then you have to create a super mesh. And the super mesh gives you two equations, and with that and the other e mesh equation you get, you can solve the circuit. So um, we'll let this be the end of this video. Thanks for watching.